الحمد لله يجيب المضر إذا دعاه ويغيث الملهوف إذا ناداه ويكشف السوء ويفرج الكروبات لا تحيا القلوب إلا بذكره ولا يقع ولا يقع أمر إلا بإذنه ولا يتخلص من مكروه إلا برحمته ولا يحفظ شيء إلا بكلاءاته ولا يدرك مأمول إلا بتيسيره ولا تنال سعادة إلا بطاعته وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له رب العالمين وإله الأولين والآخرين وقيوم السماوات والأراضين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله المبعوث بالكتاب المبين والصراط القويم صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى I want to give 10 advices in regards to the epidemic, the coronavirus. 10 advices that we Muslims should be taking in regards to this. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala أن يرفع عنا وعن المسلمين أينما كانوا كل ضر وبلاء وأن يكشف عنا الشدة وأن يحفظنا أجمعين بما يحفظ به عباده الصالحين إنه ولي ذلك والقادر عليه. The first step, inshallah ta'ala, that we should take in order to overcome this problem is to say, before the calamity generally comes, we should say, for those who are not afflicted with it, to say the following. Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, man qala anyone who says, بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم Anyone who says this three times, ثلاث مرات لم يصبه فجأة بلاء حتى يصبح ومن قالها حين يصبح ثلاث مرات لم تصبه فجأة بلاء حتى يمسي The Prophet said anyone who says this بسم الله لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم Three times that whole entire day that person will not be afflicted by any pestilence and any epidemic and any uh, viruses. And anyone who says it uh, in the morning, he will not be afflicted in the evening. And anyone who says it in the evening, he will not be afflicted in the morning. Yani this dua can prevent from you the illness coming your way. The second point, inshallah ta'ala, is to increase in saying La ilaha illa ant Subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimin Allah says in the Quran وَذَنُّونِ إِذْ ذَهَبَ مُغَاضِبًا فَظَنَّ أَلَّا نَقْدِرَ عَلَيْهِ فَنَادَى فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ فَنَادَى فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ أَلَّا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ سُبْحَانَكَ إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْغَمِّ وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِي الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نبي الله يونس بن متى He said the following dua which is لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين And when he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ We accepted it from him. وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ And we saved him from مِنَ الْغَمِّ The distress. And Allah then says, وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And we do that for the believers. Ibn Kathir, he said in the tafsir of this ayah, he says, وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ It means, أَيْ إِذَا كَانُوا فِي الشَّدَائِدِ If they are in hardship. وَدَعُونَا مُنِيبِينَ إِلَيْنَا and they call on to us, running to us. Especially if they call on to Allah by making this dua at the times of hardship. Allah wa ta'ala will save you from the problems. ولذلك the hadith of Imam Ahmed and Tirmidhi narrated is that the Prophet said, دَعْوَةُ ذِنُّونِ إذ دعا بها وهو في بطن الحوت لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين لم يدع بها رجل في شيء قط إلا استجاب الله له. The Prophet said that the dua of the, the noon, يعني يونس بن متى, was when he was in the stomach of the hoot, the whale, was that he said لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين. And the Prophet said لم يدع بها رجل, there is not a man or a woman 
who makes this by saying la ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al-zalimin illa istajab Allah lahu except Allah will accept Allah will give you what you ask for al-alamat ibn al-qayyim and he said something because this word la ilaha illa ant shows a statement ibn al-qayyim in his kitab al-fawaid he said fama dufi'at shada'id ad-dunya bi mithli at-tawhid the calamities of this world and the hardship of this world there is no greater way to repel it and push it away except through at-tawhid ولذلك كان دعاء الكرب بالتوحيد ودعوة ذنون التي ما دعا بها مكروب إلا فرج الله كربه بالتوحيد فلا يلقى في الكرب العظام إلا الشرك ولا ينجى منها إلا التوحيد فما فهو مفزع الخليقة وملجأها وحصنها وغياثها وبالله التوفيق ابن القيم he said that there is no calamities and hardship and distress that a person is put through except that توحيد is the best way to remove it. And this is the dua that is made, which is, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al It's called dua ul karb, the dua of distress. And that's what Nabi Allah Yunus ibn Matta used. And Allah wa ta'ala removed from him the harm. And there is no other way, Ibn al Qayyim said, greater, I mean, there's nothing greater that can bring calamities and hardship greater than shirk. Shirk brings a lot of calamities. And shirk brings about a lot of distress. It's the greatest, if you want to be stressed and you want to be, go through hardship and pain, take shirk. And if you want to remove hardship and pain and suffering, go to tawheed. فَهُوَ مَفْزَعُ الْخَلِيقَةِ Tawheed is the source that we run back to at times of hardship. It is our fortress. It is what we result to. وَبِاللَّهِ تَوْفِيقِ مِنُ الْقَيْمِ said. Step three, inshallah ta'ala. The third advice that I want all of you to take on regarding the coronavirus is التعوذ من جهد البلاء To seek refuge in Allah tabarak wa ta'ala from the distress of calamities and trials and tribulations. To seek refuge in Allah from it. Abu Huraira, he narrated, and it's found in Bukhari, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم that the Prophet of Allah يتعوذ من جهد البلاء that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to seek refuge in Allah from the distress of trials and tribulations. He used to. Alayhi salatu wasallam. So this is the point. كان صلى الله عليه وسلم يتعوذ من جهد البلاء. Seek refuge in Allah from it. All of us should teach ourselves to always say, أعوذ بالله من جهد البلاء. Seek refuge in Allah from it. Subhanahu wa taala. Also. The Prophet ﷺ commanded us to do it. This hadith shows us that the Prophet did it. But another hadith narrated by Abu Hurairah, the Prophet commanded us. And he said, Ta'awwadu billahi min jahdil bala. Seek refuge in Allah from the distresses of calamities. Number four. The fourth step that inshaAllah ta'ala I encourage you all to take is al muhafadatu ala dua il khuruji min al manzili. To make the dua when you're leaving your houses. When you're leaving your houses, make the dua. You can take all the precautions out there if you do not make these things, uh, these duas, at-ta'awudhu min jahdi al-bala, and you don't make this dua of Yunus ibn Matta, la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimin, or you do not do muhafadah ala dua al-khuruji min al-manzili, this tissue that you use to prevent yourself from this or the distance that you take from being close to people or or the avoiding of being in crowded areas all of that is not necessarily going to work because all of this comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Anas ibn Malik he narrated and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala that the Prophet said إِذَا خَرَجَ الرَّجُلُ مِنْ بَيْتِي if a man leaves his house فَقَالَ and he says بِسْمِ اللَّهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ in the name of Allah. On Him alone do I rely on. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. There is no strength, there is no ability except through Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. The person, the minute he makes that dua, which is the dua when you leave your house, it will be said to him straight away. يقال حين إذن. Straight away it will be said to the person, هديت you are guided. وقفيت and you are sufficed. ووقيت and you are prevented and protected. Then the narration mentions فَتَتَنَحَّالَهُ الشَّيَاطِينُ The shayateen will, will move away from that person. The shayateen will leave that person's surroundings. 
They will avoid him. You see? And they will say, the shaytan will say to the other shaytan, he will say, كَيْفَ لَكَ بِرَجُلٍ How can we harm a man that was said to him, قَدْ هُدِيتَ وَكُفِيَ وَوُقِيَ A man who has been sufficed and guided and protected. How can we harm him? لَهُ مُعَقِبَاتٌ مِنْ بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَمِنْ خَلْقِ يَحْفَظُونَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ This person is protected because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent for him his army. وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودَ رَبِّكَ إِلَّا هُو No one knows Allah's army subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fifth advice that I want to give inshaAllah ta'ala that will help us in regards to this epidemic coronavirus is سُؤَالُ اللَّهِ الْعَافِيَةُ عِنْدَ الصَّلَاحِ وَالْمَسَاءِ Asking Allah for health and well-being in the morning and in the evening. وَلِذَلِكَ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ بْنُ عُمَرٍ رضي الله تعالى عنهما He said the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he was an individual that he would make these supplications. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afiyata fi dunya wa l-akhirah. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afwa wa al-afiyata fi dini wa dunyaya wa ahli wa mali. Allahumma astur awrati wa amir rawati. Allahumma ahfadni min bayni yadayya wa min khalfi wa an yamini wa an shimali wa min fawqi wa a'udhu bi'azamatika an u'tala min tahti. The Prophet will make this dua. And Imam Ahmed and others narrated it. Allahumma awa Allah. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afiyyat. Oh Allah, I ask you for well-being, health, in this dunya and in the akhirah. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afwa wa al-afiyyat fi dini wa dunyaya. Oh Allah, I ask for forgiveness and I also ask for health in, this du- in my religion and in my worldly affairs. Wa ahli and in my family, wa mali and in my wealth. This is the dua that the Prophet will make. Allahumma astur awrati. Oh Allah, conceal my shortcomings and my faults. Wa amir raw'ati and bring peace to my mind. Allahumma ahfadni min bayni yadayya. Oh Allah, protect me from in the front. Protect me from the front. Wa min khalfi and protect me from the back. Wa an yamini, protect me from my right. Wa an shimali and protect me from my left. Wa min fawqi, protect me from the high above. Wa a'udhu bi'azamatika an u'tala min tahti. And in you, Allah, I seek refuge in you that I get harmed from beneath. This is the dua that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to make. Su'alu Allah al-afiyah. Asking Allah tabarak wa ta'ala for health and well-being. Inda as-sabah wal masa. In the morning and in the evening. The sixth step is kathratu dua Increase in supplicating generally. Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said مَنْ فُتِحَ لَهُ مِنْكُمْ بَابُ الدُّعَاءِ فُتِحَتْ لَهُ أَبْوَابُ الرَّحْمَةِ وَمَا سُئِلَ اللَّهُ شَيْئًا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ أَنْ يُسْأَلَ الْعَافِيَةِ Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, if he opens the door for a person of dua, this person makes dua a lot. If that door is open for you, the Prophet said that the door of mercy has really been opened for you. You see, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَمَا سُئِلَ اللَّهُ شَيْئًا Allah has never been asked. Pay attention and underline this point. Allah has not been asked, subhanahu wa ta'ala, anything more beloved to him than what? Min an yus'al al-'afiyah. For him to be asked about afiyah. Afiyah means health and well-being. The, the thing that Allah loves the most is that a person asks him for al-'afiyah. The Prophet sallallahu also said, Inna du'a yanfa'u mimma nazala wa mimma lam yanzil. Fa'alaykum ibadallahi bid du'a. Tirmidhi narrated this and others. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi he said that dua benefits for whatever has befallen you. If something has happened to you, the dua can help you. And the dua also works for that which hasn't happened to you yet. You see? And then the Prophet then said, فَعَلَيْكُمْ عِبَادَ اللَّهِ بِالدُّعَى All the slaves of Allah upon you is to supplicate. So increase. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is shy. And Allah is generous subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is not a slave that raises his hands and begs Allah wa ta'ala except that Allah gives him what he asks for. Number seven. Tawakkil mawadu' alati fiha al-waba. Avoid places where these coronaviruses is mentioned. Stay away from it. Abdullah ibn Amirin radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. He said anna Umar radiallahu anhu that Umar radiallahu anhu kharaja ila al-sham. He went to Sham. Falamma kana bisarga balagahu أن الوباء قد وقع بالشام. And when Umar رضي الله عنه reached a place known as Sarga, 
When he reached that place, Umar radiallahu anhu found out that there was an epidemic, there was a virus, there was a plague in Sham. Abdul Rahman ibn Awf came to Umar radiallahu anhu and he said to him, إِذَا سَمِعْتُمْ بِهِ بِأَرْضٍ فَلَا تَقْدَمُوا عَلَيْهِ If you ever hear of a plague, of a virus that hits a land, then do not go forward. وَإِذَا وَقَعَ بِأَرْضٍ وَأَنْتُمْ بِهَا And if you are in a land where the epidemic has happened, and you are in a land where the virus has happened, then do not leave it. فَلَا تَخْرَجُوا فِرَانًا مِنْهُ Don't run away, don't leave that land running away from the epidemic. Abu Huraira also narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said la yuridu al-mumridu ala al-musihhi that a person who's healthy should not be in contact with a person who is sick should avoid it so Islam is a very practical religion all these are things that our Prophet alaihi salatu wasallam spoke about stay away from places where there's large gatherings where there are many people who are going to come some people today they wanted to do particular things and that's what they wanted to do. And so what happened to them is they were not able to do this because of the epidemic. And so they, what did they do? They started to blame governments and systems and they started to blame organizations because of the fact that these governments or these organizations have prevented them from uh, large gatherings. And this is not a wrong action on behalf of these governments and it's not a wrong action on behalf of these organizations. Because it's part of our religion to stay away from places where there are these viruses. We should stay away from it. So if you know there is a person who is sick, and you know there is a person, avoid it. Number eight. Sana'i'ul ma'rufi wa badlul ihsan. Being kind and generous and good to people is actually one of the ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes calamities and illnesses from people. Anas radiallahu anhu, he heard from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he, the Prophet said, "Sanaa'ul al-ma'rufi taqi masari al-su'i wal-afati wal-halakati wa ahlu al-ma'rufi fi dunya hum ahlu al-ma'rufi fi al-akhirah." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "The good doers, those who do good for others, they are prevented from things that are harmful. They are prevented from plagues and epidemics. They are prevented from uh, harmful things and destruction. Allah prevents them from it." And the Prophet went on to say, الْمَعْرُوفِ فِي الدُّنْيَا The good doers of this earth are the same good doers in the hereafter. Ibn al-Qayyim said something very powerful in regards to this hadith. In his great kitab, Zad al-Ma'ad ibn al-Qayyim said, وَمِنْ أَعْظَمِ عِلَاجَاتِ الْمَرَضِ One of the greatest ways to prevent illnesses is فِعْلُ الْخَيْرِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ is to do good to the people. وَالذِّكْرُ And to remember Allah a lot. Wa and to supplicate. Wa to humble yourself to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Wa ibtihalu ilallahi, humiliating and surrendering yourself to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Wa tawbah and repenting from your shortcomings. And then he said, Wa li hadihi al umur ta'thirun fi daf il ilal. These things, they have the ability to remove hardship with the permission of Allah. Wa husul al shifa and to bring about cure. A'adamu min al adwiyat al tabi'iyati. And these. These things have a greater effect than the medicine that a person takes. So, fi'lu al-khayri wal ihsan, doing good to others. The dhikr of Allah wa ta'ala, supplicating, humbling and humiliating yourself to Allah wa ta'ala. Also, repenting to Allah wa ta'ala, Ibn al-Qayyim saying, this has a greater effect and it can bring a quicker result and an effective result and bring about more cure than any medication that can ever be brought. وَلَكِنْ بِحَسَبِ اسْتِعْدَادِ النَّفْسِ وَقَبُولِهَا وَعَقِيدَتِهَا فِي ذَلِكَ وَنَفْعِهِ And then Ibn al-Qayyim, he went on to say that this concept of doing good for others and remembering Allah and dua and humbling yourself for Allah and repenting to Him, all of these will only work in accordance to the person's aqeedah. It will work in accordance to the person's aqeedah and the person's nafs. What type of person are you? You see, a person can take a seed and he can plant it into the earth and he can water it. But if that earth doesn't accept it, it doesn't work. It's not that the seed is not working. And it's not because the water isn't working. It's because this earth is not accepting of it. So all of this 
your nafs has to be accepting of it. And also, you also have to have the right aqidah intact. Number nine, qiyamul layl. Praying to Allah at night, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al Imam al Tirmidhi narrated that Bilal radiallahu anhu he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Alaykum bi qiyamil layli. Fainna wudabu salihina kablakum. Wa inna qiyamil layli qurbatun ila Allahi. Wa manhatun alil itmi wa takfiru li sayyati wa matradatun li dai anil jasadi. Qiyamul layl is the action of the righteous people. Wa inna qiyamil layli and the praying of the night is qurbatun ila Allahi ta'ala. It brings you closer to Allah. وَمَنْهَاتٌ عَلِ الْإِثْمِ And it removes and gets rid of a hardship, sorry, sins and shortcomings. It prevents you from sins. قِيَامُ اللَّيْلِ وَتَكْفِيرُ لِلْسَيِّئَاتِ And it's an expiation for your shortcomings and your mistakes. وَمَطْرَدَةُ لِلْدَّاءِ عَنِ الْجَسَدِ And it is also a preventer. قِيَامُ اللَّيْلِ It prevents لِلْدَّاءِ illnesses. From where? عَنِ الْجَسَدِ From the body. قِيَامُ اللَّيْلِ does that. Praying to Allah wa ta'ala at night. The last and final one, inshaAllah ta'ala, is taqdiyatul ina'i wa ika is Covering the vessels and the containers and placing cover over it. Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he said, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Ghattul ina'a, cover, cover. The, the containers وَأَوْكُسِّقَاعَ And the water skin The place where you drink water from Seal the mouth فَإِنَّ فِي السَّنَةِ لَيْلَةً The Prophet said in the year There's a, 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 a one time Within the year that's an epidemic يَنْزِلُ فِيهَا وَبَاء Within the year there's one, epid- there's one epidemic that comes A virus comes The Prophet said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam لا يمر بإناء ليس عليه غضاء. and that illness when it comes, it doesn't go by a vessel that's covered. it doesn't touch it. you see أو سقاء ليس عليه وكاء إلا نزل فيه من ذلك الوباء. if there is any vessels and there's cups and there's pots and there's pans that are leave open, these illnesses that go into it. the prophet saying this. if you leave it open, عليه الصلاة والسلام. ابن القيم said something very powerful regarding this. he said وَهَذَا And this is مِمَّا لَا تَنَالُهُ عُلُومُ الْأَطِبَّاءِ وَمَعَارِفُهُمْ This is beyond the knowledge of the scientists and the, the, the doctors. This statement of the Prophet ﷺ. This is what the knowledge of the scientists and the doctors haven't reached. Their comprehension and their knowledge hasn't reached this. وَهَذَا مِمَّا لَا تَنَالُهُ عُلُومُ الْأَطِبَّاءِ وَمَعَارِفُهُمْ I want to conclude by saying it is upon every individual to surrender his affairs to Allah wa Taala, hoping from Allah wa Taala virtue, and hoping to get closer to Him Subhanahu wa Taala. All of our affairs are in the hands of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He's the one who controls it. He controlled it way before we came into existence, and He's controlling it now, and He will always be controlling it Subhanahu wa Taala. We also should nurture ourselves with patience and remind ourselves. The reward of patience and its virtue. Allah says in the Quran, Innama yuwaffa sabirun ajrahum bi ghayri hisab. Those who are patient, their reward is uncountable. There is no number to it. Allah wa ta'ala here, He said, Innama yuwaffa sabirun ajrahum bi ghayri hisab. There is no accountability. They're just going to get reward, unrestricted reward. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, when she said, Annaha sa'alat, she asked the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the plague. She asked him about ta'un, and then the Prophet said, "Inna kana adaban yabathu Allah ala man yasha." The epidemics and viruses are a punishment Allah subhanahu wa taala sends. The plague was this illness. It was a, this illness was a punishment Allah tabarak wa taala He sent. Ala man yasha to whoever He wills. فجعله الله رحمة للمؤمنين. But for the believers, Allah made it a mercy. mercy. فَلَيْسَ مِنْ عَبْدٍ يَقَعُ الطَّاعُونَ Because there is not a believer that is afflicted with the ta'un, the plague or the virus. فَيَمْكُثُ فِي بَلَدِي And remains in his land. صَابِرًا And he is patient. يَعْلَمُ And he knows in his heart. أَنَّهُ لَنْ يُصِيبَهُ إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَهُ And he knows that it will not afflict him except that which Allah wrote for him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
illa kana lahu mithlu ajr shahid except that he gets the reward of a martyr two things is needed from that believer after he has come with iman two things that is needed from him the first thing is that he is sabir he is patient he is patient the second that is the thing is needed from him is he knows that the only thing that's going to happen to him is what was written for him annahu lan yusibahu illa ma kataba allah lahu the only thing that will afflict him is that which Allah writ for him subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you do that, you will get the reward of a person uh, who is a martyr. You'll get the reward of a martyr. As'alullah, I ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala an yuwaffiqana ajma'ina lima yuhibbuhu wa yarda min al-amal al-salihi wal qawli al-jameel fa innahu yaqulu al-haqqa wa huwa yahdi al-sabeel. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.